the ultimate airsoft LiPo battery guide. Lithium polymer or LiPo batteries have been the go-to battery for our C fans, us airsofters and other hobbies as well. They are compact, powerful, but sometimes you can find that LiPo batteries can actually explode. Now, is that really true? In this video, I will explain all the weird number values, markings and everything you need to know about LiPo batteries. That includes how to use them properly in airsoft and how dangerous they actually are. Now, if you are here for the quick answer, yes, in 95% of the cases, LiPo is the best battery for your replica. However, since you cannot just plug any LiPo battery into your gun, it is worth taking a deeper dive and actually understanding what's going on. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? What makes a LiPo better? Compared to the older nickel metal hydrate and nickel cadmium batteries we used in airsoft a long time ago, LiPos have a higher voltage and stable discharge rate. This means they can deliver more power to the motor of the replica, giving you a much better rate of fire and trigger response. In addition to that, they have a higher energy density, meaning they are much lighter and smaller, so you don't need as much space inside Side of your replica. Back in the days, I actually had to run my batteries externally attached to my rifle to get a decent experience. With a LiPo battery, not a problem anymore. Also, they lose their charge slower when you store them for long periods of time. This is a big advantage when you don't play every single weekend. To top it all up, they are more resistant to the so-called memory effect. You don't need to discharge them first before charging them up again, like we used to do with older batteries. Now, let's focus a bit more on the connectors that go with the battery because it is important to choose the correct one. The Tamiya connector has been one of the most used connectors in airsoft for a really long time. There are two types of Tamiya, mini Tamiya and large Tamiya. They are easy to find, however, they have limitations in terms of electrical conductivity and can restrict the power flow, especially in high performance setups. They are also not the most reliable ones. If you ask me, just stay away from these connectors because there are better options. Dean's connectors or T-plugs are the current standard in airsoft. They have a lower resistance, they are more durable and thus work better in high performance builds. There is also a smaller version of the standard Dean connector which offer the same low resistance characteristics. They are designed for tighter spaces like the smaller battery compartment of the SSE18 electric pistol. If you are considering buying a new replica, check if it has this connector as it's a good indicator of an up-to-date design. The XT6 the connector is another high current option that offers excellent electrical conductivity, it is reliable and can handle high power setups. It also has a smaller version called the XT30. In my opinion, this connector is actually the best connector out there. It's durable, it's easier to plug in than the Dean's connectors, while not suffering from the issues you have with Tamiya. However, they are quite uncommon in airsoft and should you ever get into the situation of needing a battery on the field, which fits the XT60 or 30, most likely nobody is going to have it. There are also other connectors like the EC3, EC5 and HXT, which are being used in specific custom builds, but they are pretty rare. As for the HPA players who are using LiPo operated engines, the JST RCY is the standard go-to connector on the market. Now, regardless of your connector preference, make sure that you have your battery compatible with your charger and of course the replica. Otherwise, you will be forced to either exchange the connectors yourself, which requires soldering skills, or you will end up with using adapters, which defeats the purpose of a low resistance connector in the first place. Besides what was already mentioned, LiPo batteries always come with a balancing connector. Being usually small and white colored, it is exclusively used for charging and balancing the battery cells, meaning it is not supposed to connect to your airsoft replica. On the other hand, whenever you recharge the battery, it should always be connected to the charger. Finally, don't pull on the wires when you are disconnecting the battery because if you rip them, well, that's not good. Now, what do all the letters and numbers on the battery actually mean? This one is the battery capacity measured in milliamp hours. The higher the number before the letters MAH, the longer the playtime and it 
also has an effect on the trigger response and rate of fire because it influences how much power the battery is able to transfer to the motor. If you don't shoot too much, anything above 1400 milliamp hours should get you through the day, but it's always a good idea to have a spare one. Here it's pretty simple. The bigger the capacity you can fit inside your replica, the better. The voltage tells you how much power is being transferred from the battery to the motor, which will give you a higher rate of fire and faster trigger response. You can imagine this as the pressure with which you push the energy to the motor. In Airsoft we use 7.4 and 11.1 volts which are directly connected to the number of cells in the battery. One cell has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volt. A two cell battery is double that, 7.4. A three cell battery is 11.1. And it can go higher, but we don't use more than 11.1 volt batteries in Airsoft. Now, you might be thinking, sure, I will just use an 11.1 volt battery and I will get great performance. Well, it is not that easy. And the choice between 7.4 volt and 11.1 volt depends on many factors that go beyond the scope of this video. Generally speaking, 7.4 volt is the safe choice, while the 11.1 volt battery is only suitable for replicas that are designed to handle the extra power. In this case, the manufacturer should tell you which one to use, just like we do at Norwich.com. The C rating defines the maximum current or the discharge rate you can draw from the battery. A higher C rated battery will be able to sustain higher voltages at higher current output. Simply said, a higher C rating means the battery will be able to deliver more power when the motor asks for it. Common airsoft batteries are between 20 to 30 C. We could go much deeper here and start calculating amps and power, but we want to keep this video easy to understand. Basically, for maximum performance, you should be aiming for the biggest battery you can fit inside your replica. This means the highest capacity you can get, the highest C rating you can get, which will likely be between 20 to 30 C and preferably 11.1 volt battery if your replica is designed for it. Now, how much should you stress about these values? Well, not much really, especially if you have a regular AG, even a relatively small LiPo battery will be able to run it with no issues. Now let's continue with the chargers. To charge LiPo batteries, you need a specific LiPo charger that has specific features required to charge them safely. These features are overcharging protection and cell balancing. Overcharging protection is rather straightforward. You simply don't want to put more energy into the battery than it can take because it could damage the battery. Balancing is a little bit less intuitive. Remember when I explained that 7.4 volt battery consists of two cells and 11.1 of three? Simply said, these individual cells need to be the same voltage, otherwise it would damage them if they get out of sync. Balancing basically makes sure that all the cells are charge properly at the same voltage. Now back to the chargers. Here you have a couple of options, ranging from very simple ones to more sophisticated chargers that are capable of not only charging LiPo batteries, but also other types as well. The basic charger is simple, cheap with balancing and overcharge protection. You just plug it into the wall, connect the battery and it takes care of the rest. The only disadvantage is that it can only charge either a 7.4 volt or 11.1 volt LiPo battery. If you only intend to regularly charge airsoft batteries, these are a pretty good deal under 20 bucks. A more complex charger can do the same thing and way more. It offers modes like discharge, storage, fast charging and so on, and it can charge other types of batteries including your car battery for example. This one is for the more tech-savvy airsofters out there. Now, fun fact, since the bigger charger is more protective or sensitive, it sometimes refuses to charge an already undercharged battery. This happens when you simply deplete the battery under a critical level. In that case, you can try the basic charger and it sometimes can revive the battery. Of course, do this only at your own risk and don't leave the battery unattended while charging. Now, while we are at it, how do you check if your battery is charged or if it's okay? The easiest way to do that is to use a compact LiPo checker. This simple device uses no power of its own, making it very reliable. The only thing you need to do is connect the balancing connector to the 
first position of the checker. Upon that, the device will give you two important pieces of information. First, the capacity. Just like your phone, 100% means the battery is full. Second, it allows you to read the voltage of each of the battery cells. This way, you can spot any imbalances and potentially spot an issue with the battery. Keep in mind that the fully charged batteries can have a slightly higher voltage than stated on the package. For example, when you connect a fully charged 11.1 volt battery, it will actually show 12.6 volts. The great thing about these checkers is that you can display both of these information for the entire battery, as well as for each of the cells. Alternatively, if your checker doesn't show the charge percentage, you can use our cheat sheet to figure this out based on the voltage. It will also tell you the charge of each of the cells. When reading the charge of each cell, look out for big differences between the voltages in them. If you spot some that are greater than 0.02 volt, the battery may be damaged. You can try to revive it and balance it, but be careful and don't leave it unattended while charging. Lastly, if you don't have a LiPo checker, a regular multimeter can also do the trick. Just make sure that you know how to operate it, since a wrong setting on the multimeter may lead to damage. Now, to the biggest question about LiPo batteries. How safe or unsafe are they? There are many horror stories and videos of LiPo batteries catching fire or blowing up. Quote unquote. To be honest, they don't really explode, but they can burn really fast. Just like with any other battery, you need to mind the safety instructions, but since those can be rather long and dull, let me sum it up for you. First, do not puncture or penetrate the battery. I guess it's obvious you should not try to stab it and see what happens, but this also means that you should not just throw it in your bag with other stuff in it as well. Other objects such as sharp edges on your gun, gas bottle tips or other items in your bag can damage the battery, which can turn it into a barbecue. The easiest is to put the battery in your gun the day before just without connecting it. Never under or overcharge them. Use the correct charger and when you see the battery is almost empty, for example when your replica becomes slower or the ETU signals an empty battery, don't push it by trying to squeeze out a few more shots. You can simply kill the battery. If the battery is damaged, don't use it anymore. This also means swollen or inflated batteries or ones with a very different cell of voltages. As soon as you see something like that or ripped cables, punctured outside covers, etc., you should dispose of the battery. Definitely do not try to fix it yourself as short circuits can happen and make the situation even worse. Failing to do so may result in the battery overheating while in use. And unless you want to meet the local fire brigade during your airsoft game, I wouldn't recommend overlooking this. Don't forget about proper storage. Put them in a LiPo bag and store them at room temperature, away from direct sunlight. You definitely don't want a battery to sit in a flammable piece of furniture. Sure, LiPo fires are unlikely, but not impossible. If you want to store them for a longer period of time, let's say longer than a month, you should put them in storage voltage, which is 3.85 volt per cell. Most LiPo chargers have a storage function that will either charge or discharge your battery until it hits 3.85 volts per cell. Don't leave your batteries unattended when charging. Connect them to a charger in a safe area with nothing flammable around. Leave them in a LiPo bag and disconnect them when the charger indicates they are full. In case of fumes or a fire, you probably failed at something we mentioned earlier. We actually called the local firefighters and they told us the best way to handle the situation. Hold your breath and, if possible, open the window. Leave the room as fast as possible and call the firefighters immediately. If there is time and opportunity, submerge the battery in a bucket of water. Despite their length, I would also recommend reading all the LiPo safety rules on our webpage. You can find the link in the description. Lastly, what about the newer lithium iron phosphate or LiFab Po4 batteries, whatever the pronunciation is, are they any good? Well, they are more stable in extreme temperatures and can perform better than LiPo batteries in very low temperatures. However, they don't have as much power as the LiPo batteries. While they are better in the cold, they might not give you the same rate of fire and trigger response as a LiPo battery, but they are still much better than the old types. And that's it for batteries. I hope this guide helped you. And if you have more information to add, feel free to share it with everyone in the comments. Have a good one.